So I'm turning 30 next year, and I'm already very nervous. I don't do uh, very good in mornings. It takes me a lot of coffee to wake up. So you can all imagine that I'm already very nervous. So, uh, so, while, so for this talk, I decided to pick up the three phases, the three stages of my life to build a story for you. So the first phase, I grew up in an army background, did my 12 years of schooling in seven different schools, moved from one cantonment to another. And the best part about cantonments is that everything is beautifully organized and everything seems like in a method. And so I grew up believing that this is the India. It's pretty organized and, you know, there's no problem. At the other end, because my mom, uh, she never got to complete her schooling. She didn't have an idea of the, you know, the long list of careers that people were talking about. So she will always tell me one thing. She'll say, you know, life is like a magic, a series of magic trick. It doesn't make sense till the time you find the logic. So just have the confidence to find the logic. And at one time, one day, everything is going to make sense. And so from this, when I complete my schooling, I moved to Delhi University uh, to study mathematics honors. And I think that was a time when I realized that I'm actually living in a bubble, that I really just don't know what the India looks like. And when people debate on saying, is India shining or not shining, I have no idea. So I, I needed to find the pin to bust this bubble. And in an attempt to do that, I signed up for a fellowship program called as the India Fellowship Program and got an opportunity to work in Pithoragarh uh, in, a, in a rural village in a government school. And it was a very, for me, it was a very interesting scenario. 150 kids, two teachers, one teacher is doing half the time midday meal. Nobody has an idea what's happening, including me. And I think besides, like, yes, there was poor quality of education, but what was bothering me the most was that entire thing that my mom told me that you need to have the confidence to find the logic. And it was bothering me that these children don't have the confidence to find the logic. And that's the future. And so, the, so as the notion goes, if you don't like something, you need to change it. I came back, worked with my college roommates, um, and decided to do something about it. And we started uh, Milan in 2007 with my friends primarily started working into rural areas in education, and that was our first exposure to uh, rural education. We started with a small school, uh, which was a very community-driven. The community donated a land. We started with 10 kids. Fast forward, 2016, uh, the school got recognized. We worked with 350 kids. In this entire process, we also learned that the most vulnerable stakeholder in our communities is an adolescent girl. So we ran education centers to make sure that these girls who are dropping out, um, they could be brought back to the education system. And as we were doing all this, there was again something which was not making sense. And this something was that the problem is so big, you know, some maths guy, the left and the right was not making sense. So, you know, we could run a, one school and 10 centers, and where is this going to go? Because the other side is just too heavy. And so as much as the starfish story we've heard, you know, inspired me, and, but I was like, we really need to figure out what can potentially be done. So I started reading more, started talking to more academia, we started visiting NGOs. And then in 2015, a very horrifying incident happened in Uttar Pradesh where two Dalit sisters were raped and hanged in Badayun. And as the, as the story went viral, people were talking about it. I remember one of the conversations I had with uh, Kamla Devi, who's a champion mother in our you know, school. And a mother, when I call her champion mother, the mother who wants to send her daughters to school and really just carries the tiffin to make sure the daughters do well. And she said, this could have been, you know, they could have been my daughters. I don't know it's safe for my daughters to really travel so far. I don't know, you know, I should be taking that risk or not. And so my point was that, you know, as we are talking about these hundreds of girls who are not going to school, what about that one girl you know, who's, who goes to school, whose mother keeps the hand on the heart and said, I will invest whatever it takes to make sure my daughter succeeds? There are not enough role models, there are not enough success stories, specifically for adolescent girls in the communities that the parents and the girls can connect to. And so with this, 
thought that if the negative stories have the power to create a dent, can positive stories also create an impact? And these positive stories have to come from the grassroots. We launched the Girl Icon Fellowship Program. It's a two-year leadership development program for adolescent girls who have the commitment and the courage to make a change in their own lives and for those in their own communities. When we launched the program, we partnered with the UP government because we realized the government has the access to the last mile. We partnered with Hindustan Times uh, as a media partner and over 100 plus NGOs to send out the applications. We were onboarding 10 fellows because that's what we could afford. And we received an overwhelming response of over 3,000 applications, which we were not probably ready to process. But we did process, but that was a proof point for us. And this was, you know, when we spoke to some of the girls who didn't get through the fellowship program but had applied, this was the first time that somebody had asked them their own narrative. And so the power of narrative is what we felt is, is important that we need to look at. So this fellowship program technically has four major uh, elements. There is a, a residential training, a four-week residential training, focuses on building the self, the knowledge, the agency. Uh, uh, they have a mentorship program, access to a mentor. Uh, they have access to a learning grant that they can apply to and social action grant. The design of the program goes that you know, the first time the girl comes for the residential training, gets get trained, she goes back to her community, form a peer group of 20 girls, and then these 21 girls meet every 15 days on a structured curriculum that we work with them. And it's facilitated by the girl icon. And then in every six to eight months, these girls then again look at identifying one problem that they would like to find a solution to and use design thinking principles to design social action projects to address those problems. To give you some idea of what it means, we work with Neha from Madhya Pradesh, who's a child bride at the age of 14. She refused to go to the boy's family, so the parents threw her out, had no idea where to go to with the support of an NGO, went to an ashram, uh, started getting into school, and then it clicked her that it was not her fault, and she's not going to leave it. So she went to the court to get her marriage declared void, and when it happened, she got into our fellowship program, and in the first training, she said, this is not fair. We've declared it void, but that's okay. But my entire life is in ahead of me. So she went back to the court, and in a landmark judgment, she actually asked the boy's family to pay maintenance to her till the time she clear, you know, passes the age of 18. To a Uzma and Varanasi, who was able to motivate her mother to move out of an abusive relationship, and simultaneously, as a part of a social action project, was got a group together to convince the principal to get the toilets opened and cleaned. To an Akshara in Farukhabad, who is a district-level athlete, and you know she needs those microseconds to come down, but there is no space for her to practice. And a girl running in shorts is it's big deal. So she was able to motivate her group and her community to go to the DM and get a, a stadium allotted to them every Sunday to practice. And today, she's in a state academy in Lucknow preparing for nationals. The reality is that we cannot afford a Neha, a Uzma, a Akshara to fail. Because their success stories is our success stories. We currently work with about 90 fellows across Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. And we are looking at expanding to about 400 fellows next year. And this is my call of action for you all. Join the movement. Celebrate with them. Cheer for them. This is your opportunity. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave you with a small poem. I know I'm running out of time. Uh, this is a poem that I wrote, getting highly inspired by my first training with these girls. Ek din mein pooch baitha sure se ki raat ko andhera kyun hai? Ek din mein pooch baitha sure se ki raat ko andhera kyun hai? वो जरा मुस्कुरा के बोला पहले ये बता ये प्रश्न मेरा क्यों है वो जरा मुस्कुरा के बोला पहले ये बता ये प्रश्न मेरा क्यों है मैं बिना कुछ लिए तेरे लिए दिन भर जलता हूं क्या तू अपने लिए रात में भी नहीं जल सकता कब तक छलेगा खुद को जब अपने बनाए रास्तों पर खुद नहीं चल सकता फिर मैं अकेला क्या करूं 
तेरे लिए मैं क्यों जलूं जीवन के संघर्ष पथ पर कुछ तुम चलो कुछ मैं चलूं कुछ तुम बढ़ो कुछ मैं बढ़ूं थैंक यू सो मच